Hello there and welcome back my friends. In this episode we are of course talking about aquarium floating plants. We're going to be going through a few of the species, the pros and cons of keeping floating plants in your aquarium and a very brief overview of their care. So if that sounds like something you're interested in please stick around, leave your opinion in the comments and if you like this video and want to see more of this kind of content, please remember also to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell to get updates and notifications when I do a new video. Floating plants have become more and more popular recently in the freshwater tropical aquarium scene. The reason being many people are using them less as a decorative piece, but more as a part of the biological ecosystem within their aquariums. Shrimp tanks, Better tanks and nano aquariums are becoming also very, very popular and floating plants tends to be a perfect addition to these kinds of systems. So there are lots of different types of floating plants, many different species. Availability of these species is very geographically different. In some countries you can get almost every species and in others there are restrictions and bans on what species will be available. And this is because a lot of the floating plant species can be environmentally dangerous depending on where you live. So the most common varieties you're going to come across for an aquarium setup are things like frog bit, salvinia, water lettuce, hyacinth and of course duckweed. There are advantages and disadvantages to using these different species so the most common ones to be used are most likely frogbit and salvinia and these are a larger leafed plant they grow by spreading out via runners and off these runners you get new leaves and new plants now the reason that these are a popular species is because they are relatively slow growing although they can grow quite quickly in the right conditions and their leaves are big and easy to break off and they're easy to remove from the aquarium but not just that they also grow at a decent size they're not too big and they're not too small they seem to be the perfect species for most aquarium setups on the other end of the spectrum we have the other types now these three species tend to be more linked to ponds but they are becoming a lot more popular within the aquarium scene especially one of them in particular so we'll just focus on the larger ones, which is water lettuce and water hyacinth. Now water hyacinth is actually banned in the UK now, uh, and I think most of Europe, so I can't get you an image of it, but I think it's available in most other countries. But what we do have in the UK is water lettuce. This is generally used more as a pond floating plant, but it can be used in larger aquariums. And I say larger aquariums because this is a large floating plant. It's not very suitable for smaller aquariums. However, there is a dwarf water lettuce available. And finally, the fifth species I'm gonna mention is one that is loved and hated equally amongst fish keepers, and that is duckweed. Duckweed is one of these marmite plants because it does a very good job if you use it in the right way. It is for removing nitrates and phosphates from an aquarium. It is for providing shade and cover in an aquarium. However, it is highly invasive and that is one of its problems. If you add duckweed to your aquarium, you are committing your aquarium to have duckweed in it. Essentially, it's one of the hardest things to remove. And even if you miss a single leaf when you're trying to remove it, it can multiply very, very quickly overnight. That being said, it is incredibly popular these days. So let's talk about the pros and cons and why would you want to add floating plants to your aquarium and what are the considerations that you should be taking. So there are many good reasons to add floating plants to an aquarium. First and foremost, a lot of the floating plants just look wonderful and they add an extra dimension to your aquarium display, especially when you've got the nice leaves above the water surface and the beautiful trailing roots throughout the aquarium. It really adds that extra piece of beauty to the ecosystem and to your aquascape. One of the main reasons people are using floating plants these days is to provide a source of filtration for their aquarium and to bring down nitrates and phosphates. Floating plants are excellent and very very efficient at removing waste products from your aquarium. That's how they grow essentially and because they grow so quickly they remove the waste products 
very fast as well. There is a growing movement of not using a uh, mechanical filter within nano aquariums and to rely solely on the plants within it to give you that filtration. And floating plants are one of the biggest sources of filtration within your aquarium in these cases. Not only because they remove the nitrates and phosphates, but also because on the underside of the leaves and on the root systems, you will get a growth of the nitrifying bacteria, which is what breaks down the ammonia through the process into nitrate. So they are excellent at filtering these nano no filter aquariums. The other thing that they provide is a source of oxygenation. Now these plants tend to release their oxygen from the underside of their leaves which allows the oxygen to then get into the water column itself and give that oxygen to the fish or the shrimps within the system. Within this as well you get surface cover. Surface cover can be good or bad, I'll discuss the negatives in a moment. However in general when you are covering the surface of the water or partially covering the surface of the water this increase in shading reduces the amount of light that hits the main body of the tank and can stop lots of the nuisance algae from growing especially in combination of removing a lot of the waste products from the tank as well. Aquariums with lots of floating plants on the surface tends to have a lot of less pest algae growing within them. In terms of how the livestock benefit from floating plants, there are quite a few positives for the fish and shrimps within your system. Firstly, fish tend to feel more secure with something above them. It means they aren't so worried about being predated upon and they're more likely to come out of hiding and shoal around and swim happily within your system. They can also find bits and pieces to graze and peck at on the root systems and the underside of the leaves. This goes for shrimps as well, and you'll commonly find shrimps grazing on the roots and underside of the floating plant leaves, picking up debris that has been trapped in there, but also grazing on the microfauna that's living in that area. And finally, another major benefit, if you're into breeding shrimps or breeding fish, the plants can provide a great place for either baby fish to hide or for fish to lay their eggs onto, or even if you've got better fish, they'll use it as an area to build their bubble nests. And you'll also commonly find a lot of the baby shrimps seeking refuge within the root systems because it means they can have somewhere to eat but also somewhere to hide away from being predated upon if you've got larger fish in your tanks. So you can see there are many, many positives to keeping floating plants in your fish tanks. But there are also some negatives as well. Not many, but I'll go through them. Firstly, if you leave your floating plants unchecked, they can take over your aquarium and completely cover the surface. This can be bad if you're keeping plants below them because they're going to shade out and reduce the amount of light going to your plants which may negatively impact them because they're not going to get the light they need to grow. This can be easily solved though because you can make a DIY screen to limit where your floating plants are allowed to grow. Another thing that will impact your other plants within the system is the fact that the floating plants can remove too many nutrients from the water column, not allowing your substrate plants to actually get enough food for them to grow properly. So you may need to increase the amount of liquid fertilizer that you introduce into your systems. In terms of care, they are generally undemanding. Some species require more light than other, but you'll grow most floating plants under medium to low light. As long as it has a good amount of par and is the right spectrum, you're going to be fine growing your floating plants. Being heavy nutrient users, that is something you're going to need to look at. You might need to introduce fertilizer just to keep them from going yellow or indeed do large regular water changes just to reintroduce some of the micro and macronutrients that they require to grow. But if you do regular water changes and you have a reasonable bio load in terms of fish or shrimps in your systems, then the floating plants tend to be quite undemanding. One thing they don't particularly like um, is lots of flow. Many of these plants do better when there is minimal flow, minimal surface agitation, and that's because that's just how they have evolved to live. If they have too much flow, they don't tend to flourish, and also the size that they grow to can be inhibited. There's a big difference between the size of many of these species in heavy flow and in low to no flow. They tend to grow a lot bigger in the lower flow areas. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I really do appreciate it. Please remember to give me your feedback below in the comments section if you like this video, or if you've got any other comments you wanna add. 
Also, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks very much for watching and happy fish keeping!